Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. A serial robber may be behind bars. New on the night beat, one man is in jail tonight after San Antonio police say he was involved in several robberies. Nathaniel Talley arrested earlier today. The night team Stephen Cavazos is live south of downtown. And Stephen, police believe more people could be involved. Is that correct? That's right, Stephen AC. San Antonio police believe that Tally is just one of many suspects that could be involved in a string of robberies that took place earlier this month. Now, those robberies happening between December 10th and December 11th. Several convenience stores were robbed. Some of the clerks that were told were robbed from their wallets, jewelry, and cell phones. Police say that, that rob the robbery task force unit was able to identify Tally through surveillance video and information from the public. He was located at an apartment on the northwest side of town. Police say that he had attempted to a run after they made an arrest. After they were attempting to arrest him, he took off on foot. That is, he was apprehended. Police say he was carrying a weapon with him at the time. Now, he is being charged with two counts of aggravated robbery, including evading arrest and an unlawful carrying of a weapon. When we asked Tally about the allegations, he said they were false. For now, reporting live, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Steve. Thank you, Stephen. A high speed chase leads to multiple crashes. This happening on the city's northwest side. Now, two people are in custody. The night team Stephen Cavazos very busy tonight. He de details a chase that came to a crashing end off of Wurzbach and Colonnade today. That's the first thing I've seen like that out here. Orion Curry still in shock after witnessing a high speed chase as he was driving to the grocery store. I just seen a black Nissan just going full speed coming around the corner. Texas DPS say it was a chase that began in Medina County when a DPS trooper spotted a black Nissan car making a traffic violation on Highway 90. The driver refusing to stop for the trooper. They don't want to stop uh, for an officer. He's going to be, uh, you know, on his guard. He's going to be ready to uh, to uh, take action if necessary. Sergeant Orlando Moreno says the driver led troopers on a chase into San Antonio city limits. Their pursuit ended when the driver crashed into a car that was coming out of a nearby parking lot, causing two other cars to crash. Sky 12 capturing the aftermath. You're putting yourself in danger as well as innocent people in danger. Texas DPS arrested the driver, a 30 year old man and the passenger, a 34 year old woman. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Both suspects are charged with evading arrest with a vehicle, which is a felony. No one was injured. In other news tonight, San Antonio police are investigating a drive by shooting on the city south side. It happened at a home off Oriental Avenue just before eight this evening. When police arrived, they found a 27 year old man shot in the hand and a dead dog. Police say around 10 to 15 shots were fired at the home, and they believe this was a targeted shooting. They're still working to identify the shooter's vehicle. If you have any information, contact police. San Antonio police still looking for the shooters who opened fire at South Park Mall last night. It's a story we brought to you as late breaking news during the night beat. Well, police saying today it was not a random attack. The four people shot were the intended targets. Police are searching for at least five people who took off in a black Dodge Charger. We have new details on the suspects involved in the theft of a wounded warrior's truck, which contained his Purple Heart. 30 year old Hector Bernal is facing two vehicle theft charges. The affidavit states a police officer spotted Bernal at an apartment complex on Camino de Oro on the south side near I-35. Police say the area is known for storing stolen vehicles. Officers saw, officer saw him get out of the truck, wipe off what they describe as prints, and then get into a Nissan car. The Nissan was tracked back to Bernal's girlfriend. When police went to question her, they found him. As for that Purple Heart, it was recovered from the stolen truck. 17-year-old Valeria Pineda is facing an aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon charge. The affidavit shows Pineda met up with the two victims to buy a gun at the Lincoln Village Apartments on the north side near Loop 410. Pineda showed up with two other men when they found out the price was $900 for the gun. One of the suspects, the male suspects, took the gun and put it in his pocket. The other male suspect pointed a handgun at both victims. A wallet, car keys, and two cell phones were also taken. One victim was hit in the back of the head. Pineda identified in a photo lineup. The other two suspects have not been caught yet. The next food truck park hotspot. A local entrepreneur is turning a family dream of owning a food truck park into a reality. The owner of 88 Social hopes to make space north of downtown for good food, 
local artists, and small business owners. The Night Team's Patty Santos tells us about the inspiration behind the business. I think the moment I saw it, I knew that it would be the perfect spot for a food truck park slash cocktail bar. It's in the plans, but it might take a while. Ricardo Ortiz says the plans for 88 Social Food Truck Park and Bar have been in the making his entire life. We would always pitch ideas back and forth, you know, with each other on, you know, different bar themes and different restaurant themes and what we think, you know, could blow up in the city. He and his brother Armando Ortiz envisioned a place that allowed artists and foodies to flourish. This is definitely something that is, is a mix of, you know, both of our dreams. Ortiz says the 8,000 square foot lot will bring in much needed needed affordable food to an area growing in population. The food truck park and bar will be located along Avenue B near 10th Street. He says it's an ideal spot because it's right across the street from some up and coming retail and apartments. Ortiz owns Wrigleyville Grill Food Truck. He knows firsthand that truck owners lack the space to show off their talent. Do the crazy wits as you can. He wants 88 Social to be that space. It gives a good opportunity for the people that we're working with to be able to bring, you know, their business to an up and coming neighborhood that would otherwise be unaffordable. The park will accommodate five food trucks. Two modular storage containers will be transformed into the bar and a canvas. His brother Armando Ortiz didn't live to realize their vision together. We always threw ideas with each other back and forth like our entire lives. He was killed by a wrong way driver in 2017, but 88 Social pays homage to his memory. He always wanted to you know, have a place of his own and now he will. And Ortiz hopes to be in business by this coming spring. This is, of course, pending all the proper permit approvals by the city. Live along the Riverwalk, Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Patty. No agreement from the top two leaders in the Senate after President Trump was impeached last night. Minority Leader Chuck Schumer and Majority Leader Mitch McConnell expected to negotiate the parameters of the impeachment trial, whether witnesses would be called, etc., House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says she wants Senate leaders to cut a deal on what the trial would look like before sending the articles to the Senate. But Republicans are firing back, saying Democrats have a weak case. Is the president's case so weak that none of the president's men can defend him under oath? It looks like the prosecutors are getting cold feet in front of the entire country and second guessing whether they even want to go to trial. There are no constitutional rules for when Pelosi is required to transmit the articles, but during President Bill Clinton's impeachment, House Republicans sent them over almost immediately. The San Antonio River Authority hosted their first ever holiday kayaking event. It was a new way to enjoy the River of Lights. Participants got to paddle between the Pearl and the Lock and Dam off Brooklyn Avenue. Organizers say this new event is a unique holiday experience. All along the river are lights in the water, and then certainly the trees are lit up. Down by the uh, Lock and Dam at Brooklyn, we have a 30-foot tall LED Christmas light that lights up to music. So it's going to be a wonderful uh, experience tonight for the kayakers. We're actually giving them glow sticks, so the kayakers tonight actually become part of the light show for the people who are out here just enjoying it on the, on the hike and bike trail. The next kayak river event, by the way, will be in June. What a great idea. All right, 200 children. A little happier tonight after the San Antonio Housing Authority toy giveaway. Toys are given out to 85 families in the area who benefit from the Housing Authority. The president and CEO says they make sure to do their research when selecting these toys. They want to make sure they get age appropriate toys for kids ages 3 to 18. We're dedicated to the effort. We understand the need is great amongst many of our clients who traditionally make twelve or $11,000 a year. We're happy to extend that feeling of Christmas joy to them through our participation. Know that we're here to support. This is the fifth year for this event. And today was the coldest day of the calendar year and actually the coldest morning we've had since November of 2018. We started the day at 27 degrees in San Antonio, widespread 20s across South Texas. And this morning we were in the teens in the hill country. So that begs the question, is it going to be as cold tomorrow morning? And the answer is no. Here's the forecast at sunrise. We'll be about 43 in San Antonio, some upper mid to upper 30s in the hill country. But we are anticipating uh, pretty much everybody to remain above freezing today. 
tonight through tomorrow morning around Bear County. Lackland about 44 in the morning along with Randolph Stone Oak 43 and even Seguin about 41. But get ready for a damp day tomorrow and temperatures aren't going to rise that much into the afternoon. We'll talk about our rain, how much we could get and look ahead to Christmas coming up. Thank you, Adam. It's a program that's changing the lives of everyone involved. How one woman is working hard to make sure no veteran feels alone. This SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. Hi, my name is Jennifer Garcia from Broadway Bank. I'd like to give a shout out and happy holiday message to Chief Master Sergeant Garcia, who is currently stationed in South Korea. Also, Air Force Academy Cadet Juanita Garcia, happy holidays. Also, I'd like to say a great big thank you and happy holidays to everyone that is currently and formerly served in the armed forces. Thank you. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. A military mom on a mission. Kathy Gallagher of Cibolo has been connecting veterans battling post-traumatic stress disorder to the help they need. She started Operation Battle Buddies as a way to pair service dogs with heroes. The night team's Patty Santos shows us how the program has changed lives. This litter was born on Veterans Day. That's cool. Uh-huh. And this litter was born the next day. Kathy Gallier feels like connecting physically and emotionally wounded veterans with a battle buddy is her calling. Because I love my country, because I'm a proud mom, and to think, thank these vets and their families for what they've done for us. In 2015, the mother of two veterans started Operation Battle Buddies. She breeds Labrador Retrievers and gifts the puppies to veterans in need of a service dog. Somebody that's there all the time and loving unconditionally and just helping them bring their anxiety down. Good boy. The latest litter of 15 has already been paired up with veterans. At eight weeks old, the pups will embark on their mission. The first week of January, these puppies will be eight weeks and they'll be headed home with their heroes and then the training starts. Six months ago, Rich Stinson was paired up with Bailey. She's added a lot of light to some darkness. The 25 year retired Army veteran was diagnosed with severe PTSD and clinical depression. His therapist got him in touch with OBB. Now, with the help of Bailey, brighter days are ahead. She's a very welcome relief uh, at the end of a hard day uh, because although I can't sit and talk with her and have her talk back, uh, I just have a sense that she understands. OBB pays for training to get each dog the service dog certification required to meet each veteran's needs. Costs are over $3,000 for each dog. Veterans they help live across the country. In, in the break. Besides life-changing healing, Stinson says OBB has brought him camaraderie with her trainers and other veterans in the program. Hard to put into words without getting emotional, but she is a significant part of my life and a uh, significant part of um, my recovery, which is going to be an ongoing process. Gallier's scrapbook is a reminder of the more than 20 veterans and countless lives OBB has touched. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. How cute are those dogs? Yeah, Gallier, I know, Gallier says the decision to breed the dogs is something she considered carefully. She and her friends do all of the fundraising to pay for the program. You can head to KSAT.com to find out how you can get more involved. Battle Buddies. Yes, turning now to weather. Let's take a live look outside with live cam right now. 50 degrees out there. Adam, today's my Friday. I'm excited <laughs> about the holiday week get ahead. And it's a lot. I mean, it was 35 just yeah. two nights ago. Yeah. Remember that? At this, at this hour, yeah. exactly. And so we are not going to see the big temperature drop off tonight that we experienced the past few nights. A bit of a warming trend. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, for morning temperatures, that is. We'll, we'll, we'll get to specifics for tomorrow afternoon coming up in a moment. It's not going to be a warmer day in the afternoon, and you'll want your umbrella tomorrow as well. The, notice the clouds as they increase throughout the day, and especially this evening at sunset. You see those clouds moving in? They're acting as a blanket and insulating us. So we made it up to 60 degrees for the high temperature, and right now we're down to 50. So we've dropped 10 degrees, and we'll drop probably... 
another 12 degrees or so, or maybe 10 more degrees max uh, here in San Antonio, and just a few more degrees in the hill country through the night. The temperatures don't fall off as quickly with that blanket of clouds. And across the state, some 40s, a few 30s in the hill country, already upper 30s, Kerrville and Fredericksburg, just updated to 43 in Rock Springs. You get to Catula, it's 59 in Laredo at 61. So here's a look at our increasing cloud cover coming in from the southwest and it's been increasing throughout the day. It's going to continue to do so and those clouds will just be lowering throughout the night and first thing tomorrow morning. It's probably going to be damp as a result of this dip in the upper level flow. It's thrown that Pacific moisture our way throughout the day today, but this upper disturbance is really going to drop in tomorrow and that's when it's going to be the most noticeable. It's going to give us a damp and somewhat raw day. We could use the moisture. Absolutely. 37% of the state is considered in drought, and a good portion of that is here in South Texas, especially the most extreme drought, which is the red areas. Uvalde over toward Brackettville and even just north of Johnson City there, where you see the red, that's where we have the most intense drought. Now, I do anticipate fairly widespread rain tomorrow, but I don't anticipate really good accumulations from this. So let's go through time. Clouds continue to thicken overnight tonight. First thing tomorrow morning for the commute, probably some areas of scattered rain and just overall dampness. And we'll have some off and on or just intermittent light showers throughout the day tomorrow. 7 a.m. Then we go into noon and at times we'll see a little burst of a moderate shower pass by here and there. The bulk of the rain will likely be east of I-35 and especially along the I-37 corridor closer to the Gulf Coast line. So overall, just a very raw, damp and cool day. And in terms of actual accumulations throughout the day tomorrow, I think locally we'd be lucky to squeeze out a quarter to a third of an inch. It's possible you head farther to the west, closer to Del Rio, maybe a trace at best. If you want to get into the half inch category, you have to head south down I-37, get closer to parts of Atascosa County, basically Pleasanton toward Beeville and on into Corpus Christi. So not a drought denting rain, but better than nothing. Hopefully it'll boost the aquifer a little bit, especially if we get the rain in the right spots. And this is really our best chance because look at the forecast for rain. Eh, we have a good shot tomorrow with those scattered showers are fairly widespread, but otherwise nothing all the way through next week. So 43 in the morning. Yes, we'll be above freezing but only 52 into the afternoon. So overall a cool day. You'll want the jacket and the umbrella. You want the combination tomorrow with the off and on rain, which will taper off by tomorrow evening. And then Saturday morning, we'll start the day with some fog. Otherwise, a sunny day and comfortable back into the 60s, both Saturday and Sunday with that sunshine. And looking ahead to Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, nothing to worry about weather-wise. It's going to cooperate outdoor activities, traditions outside, whatever you want to do. Yeah. It's going to work. Santa will be okay. Absolutely. Yes. Good flight weather and All got right. a jet stream. Wind at his back. Perfect. Thank you, Adam. All right. Spurs take on an improved Brooklyn team. Tonight. That's true. But the last time the Nets won in San Antonio, they were the New Jersey Nets, ah. not the Brooklyn Nets. But they are a better team as Brooklyn. But again, the Spurs keep their streak alive, though. We'll show you how they were able to come from behind in order to do that. And the Cowboys star quarterback, Dak Prescott, still not 100%. Will he play on Sunday against the Eagles? Coming up. DeJounte Murray back in the starting lineup. It's DeMar DeRozan, the Spurs facing the Brooklyn Nets, who the Spurs own in the AT&T Center since 2003. Someone forgot to tell the Nets, who opened up on a 12-2 run. Jared Allen with a tomahawk throwdown, but the Spurs battle back. DeJounte with a corner three to get the Spurs within one. Then it's Patty Mills from the same spot. The Spurs are still down 33-27 after one. Second quarter now, the Nets Garrett Temple with the alley-oop to San Antonio's own Torian Prince from Warren High School. Nets are up 14, but the Spurs battle back again. This time the defense fuels the offense and somehow DeMar gets this to go. I don't know how. And then Lonnie Walker, the fourth, with a three. And the Spurs are now within six of the break, 56 to 50. In the third quarter, the Spurs are down 10 with under two minutes to play. But they go on a run. Patty with a bounce pass to Jakob Pertl. Then Patty with a catch and shoot three. And they're not done with this. Derek White with a, another catch and shoot three. We're
were tied at 81 in the process. And watch Patty just drive to the basket this time to get the Spurs their first lead of the game. 83-81 on a 12-0 run to end the quarter. LaMarcus Aldridge, a top of the key jumper in the fourth. He finished with 20, but the star of this game was Patty Mills. He had a career tying seven three-pointers, three of them in the fourth quarter, to help give the Spurs their biggest lead and eventual win, 118-105. Now 17 in a row against the Nets in San Antonio. A mindset thing, you know, for me, trying to um, just be aggressive and, and, and being in that attack mode, I think. I think it, it can take pressure off, you know, uh, LaMarcus and and, uh, and DeMar. So, um, you know, I do play with a lot of emotion, a lot of uh, positive vibes. So um, it, it comes out of me from time to time. All right, next up, Kawhi and the Clippers come calling again at Saturday at 7.30. Congratulations to Spurs assistant coaches Tim Duncan and Becky Hammond, both nominated today to the Naismith Hall of Fame, class of 2020. Duncan, who played for 19 seasons with the Spurs, leading the silver and black to five NBA championships with the Spurs head coach Greg Popovich, is arguably the best power forward to ever play the game. Duncan will be a first ballot Hall of Famer when the class is announced during the NCAA Tournament Championship in Atlanta. Meantime, Becky Hammond played 16 seasons in the WNBA after a great college career at Colorado. Colorado State, playing eight seasons in San Antonio as a member of the Silver Stars and just stars before retiring in 2014. Since that time, has been an assistant coach with the Spurs, the first full-time female assistant coach in the history of the NBA. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Everyone is still reading from Jason Garrett's revelation this week that Dak Prescott suffered an injury to his throwing shoulder in the Cowboys' 44-21 win over the Rams. And then later, during the interviews with the team, running back Ezekiel Elliott revealed it's a sprained AC joint in his throwing shoulder that he suffered in the first quarter after faking the handoff to him. But he did play the rest of the game, but for the first time in his career in Dallas, is listed as limited in practice yesterday and today. Here's what Dak has to say about his injury. I've been fortunate, I guess, in the NFL not dealing with it, but in college, uh, this was a once every other every other week thing, uh, especially running as much as I did. So um, it's not anything that I haven't had before. Uh, I know how to handle it, and uh, I mean I'm getting better. Uh, simple as that. Uh, the mobility, the function, and it is uh, it's all improving. That's the kids, the goal. I'll be good to go Sunday. That's great to hear. If you're a Cowboy fan, where does the fight in Texas Aggies recruiting class rank next? Texas Aggies are enjoying the six-ranked class 2020 recruits. That includes defensive back Jalen Jones, who signed on the dotted line in ceremonies at Steel High School on Wednesday. Now, as the Aggies reload, they prepare for the Texas Bowl at NRG Stadium in Houston on December the 27th. That's where they'll face Oklahoma State for the first time since the Aggies left the Big 12 for the SEC in 2012. When you look at the way we finished last year, um, the big one in the bowl game, uh, it really puts a good taste in your mouth going into the offseason and you know for me finishing my career you know you always want to win but this is a big one you know not always playing SEC ball and you know you know getting outside to a different conference I feel like is always um, something that's really good so uh, you know we're it's close to home and indoor and so we're excited Congratulations to the Wimberley Texans. They're headed to the first state title game since 2011. That's where they'll take on Texarkana Pleasant Grove in the Class Roy Division II state championship game in AT&T Stadium on Friday afternoon. The Texans are peaking at the right time. They're losing three games in the regular season to Austin Regents, Navarro, and Cuero. The Texans have rallied to win five straight playoff games, including a rematch against Navarro on the Alamo Dome that they won 42-12 in the state quarterfinals. It's a dream for, for all these kids and, and uh, to be able to accomplish that, to get to the final game, championship game, uh, just, just a lot of excitement and, you know, looking forward to it on Friday afternoon. Kick off on Friday in AT&T Stadium. That will be tomorrow in Arlington, set for 3 p.m. The 6A Texas High School Football All-State Team announced today. And on the, on that team, the second team offense, Logan Parr of O'Connor, wide receiver Darren McKnight of Steele, running back DeAnthony Lewis out of Justin. And on the second team defense, some more folks here from the San Antonio area, Jackson Macias and Clemens, Devon Martin out of Stevens, and defensive back Jalen Jones out of Steele is headed to Aggie Land. Congratulations to all those, and we'll bring you the 3A and the other guys, 4A, for you later this week. When it comes to the Spurs, I mean, they, they either have a really hot start or a really <laughs> bad start. I mean, it, it's a lot of that just because of the youth of this team. I'm sure that has a lot to do with it, but also just playing together, and now you have DeJounte back in the starting lineup. So I, I think they'll increasingly get better during this month and next month. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. You got it. We are right back. Tonight's show is less disgusting than eggnog. We didn't mean to interrupt your show, but we were in the neighborhood, and we just thought we might pop over and interrupt your show. Oh.
So tomorrow a gray, damp and cool day. 43 in the morning, but only making it to near 50 into the afternoon. So off and on scattered light rain. We could see about a quarter of an inch here and there. All right. Thank you, Adam. Thanks for watching. Good morning. San Antonio starts at 430 in the morning. Good night.